She's a wonderful uh, press. He isn't much of a poet, you know, but uh, if you asked him, he would say her hair shines like blonde hair. <laughs>
Brilliant. So with that in mind, you probably all have a day to yourselves. And I'd like to get me... <laughs> Uh, research done or work done. I mean, genuinely, you've just, you've been working all night. You're tired and the dawn is breaking. Okay. You're going to spend most of today asleep, have an evening off, and then go into Versailles the next day. So I've um, delegated the, the task of corpse removal and then I've gone home for a kip. It, well, you you were busy investigating murders. H- haven't and you I'm earned the it? sergeant, so that's how this thing <laughs> so goes. So everyone has to listen to you. Um, so uh, the collection of you break off you return home because you're all exhausted. Mm. I would like to hear about your home lives. I would like to know what your houses look like. I would like to know uh, who's there awaiting you, whether they're awaiting you grumpily or whether they're awaiting you with open arms ready to welcome you. Uh, Who wants to tell us a little bit about where they live? I'll oh. I'll dive in front of the bullet. Yeah, <laughs> Some whizzing around as I gaze. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so uh, I historically my family were were quite poor, um, but through my own work, uh, sort of rising through the ranks of the military, uh, we are now uh, stable. I think is the best word for it. We're not well off, but we get on. I think yep. we have a little property uh, just a little to the south. Of Paris, uh, no farming land, but like a small garden, uh, and in the back of it, my wife Marguerite has uh, like a washing line, and my two daughters um, can play out there. They are Lucy and Olivier, I think is how I'd say that. Um, um, oh, Olivier, but yes, Olivier, so Olivier would yeah. be a male name. I yes, yes. Uh, so Lucy and Olivier are like six and eight. Um, they're very young. Uh, so they still get the use of like this small yard feels very luxurious to them. And I'm very grateful to have the opportunity to give them that. Uh, so as I return um, early in the morning, I guess. Yeah, it's, having it's worked all night. You are in the south of Paris already, but you're it, you're a little bit further out. So you actually probably have to turn around um, and head back. Um, towards the catacombs, actually, probably I would actually, before you arrive. I would take that opportunity. I know we're joking a bit about, you know, I'm the sergeant, I get to go home, but I am fairly, like, loyal to my men, so I would check in there and probably spend an hour or so making sure everything's good, and then, ideally, one of them goes, no, no, sergeant, you ha- you should go home. You should take some time to yourself. You're, you're you know, our personal hero. Uh, please <laughs> rest. And I go, oh, well. I suppose okay. I, I suppose I must. Uh, that makes sense. Uh, who who speaks up? Who 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 truly loves the sergeant? Which of your well, uh, three other soldiers? It's so you? tough to pick only one. Uh, Dupois, I left in command, um, and I think he's he's the slightly uh, drunken man, but competent enough. And I think it's. I mean, unless there's anything that's gone south. It's simple enough work. We were the ones that saw something strange in the catacombs. Have they noticed anything since they've been uh, working? After you left, there a few more bodies were unloaded. Um, Malon helped secure order and get people back to work. And after a while, uh, when he left to go and rendezvous with you, uh, uh, Rigaud, the doctor, also left, um, basically, since the work had was flowing well so okay. since then uh everything's just been uh running like a well-oiled machine so there's been no sign of something lurking in the catacombs no i mean there's mutterings amongst the troops but uh, sure but no. sure okay all right well if that in mind then I, I i check in and then um i will make my way down south i think i don't think i got a horse or anything so i think it's a nice long no, walk it'll be a long walk in fact you'll probably arrive home last the others will probably arrive home before you so let's jump across to the two of them which of you wants to jump in front of the bullet next i mean i can excellent yeah Please. i was like i was waiting for jackson to be like no i've got a thing and I, was like, no. <laughs> I got nothing all right well you've got another little bit to think about the nothing that you're gonna have um <laughs> so uh i think Joseph, I'm just gonna go with Hugo because it works for both. So yes. I think Hugo uh, probably has like some kind of residence, probably near or in the city. Like I don't, I, I would assume I don't, I don't actually know anything about France at that time period, so I don't know where it would be likely. But like probably renting a place if that's the thing that still gets done, and it's not a great place because credit scores are low. Um, but it's, 
it's as comfortable as can be for two people soon to be two people and a puppy <laughs> yes you, you would probably rent it be renting a small apartment um you know thin walls you can hear people all around you um it would actually probably be, be quite close to the sort of more built up urban paris so you head north um uh moving in maybe cross uh through the 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 bridges until you head up into the northern side of paris where you can um settle in um your wait, house wait, is is montmartre fancy uh, Mont- Montmartre at this point, uh, I do not believe is particularly in- inhabited. It's not super okay. busy at this stage, uh, but it but it is um, it-, it-, it kind of gets filled up across the next decades, unless I'm much much mistaken. And it's fine. I'm somewhere in the north in a yep. small apartment. I'm gonna say uh, probably like so we share the apartment complex with like a bunch of other small like families or mm-hmm. maybe like the the sort of you know single tortured artist yep yep uh you know like the proper kind of parisian oh of course of course you know, the whole thing <laughs> someone is having an argument and threatening to kill someone else and then like <laughs> they love each other though so they won't exactly uh, it's very french yes yes of course brilliant oh, um nice. so you return home and therese is there your sister who is mm-hmm. pretending to be you uh yep. so therefore well you are pretending to be your husband so therefore Therese yep. is pretending to be your uh wife yes um yeah, that's um, how it works you know she she greets you how do the two of you get along is there um uh, residual tension what does she get up to with her days um I would say no I'd say like she's she's pretty spirited I would say like in our younger years we probably like bounced off each other a lot. Like I get the feeling that Hugel is was a bit more responsible being the older sibling and like, you know, caring but also bossy. <laughs> you know, the thing that like small children are where they're just like, no. Yep. Uh and Therese was um much more like spirited and mm. energetic. So younger years, yeah, they did they probably didn't get on particularly well. But now they are adults. They, I think they get on, they get on pretty well. Uh, I imagine Therese is, is like, depending on how long we've been here at this point, probably spent a bit of time kind of excitedly looking around the city and getting yes. to know things like, cause we're from Brittany originally. Yes, absolutely. Um, so I, I think like she probably does spend her days doing things like exploring the city, uh, you know, trying, I feel like as with most people at the time, trying to find things to eat. Yeah, that's like probably a, lot a big of... part of the work and waiting in queues to bring water back for, for the collection of you. Yeah. Are you worried about Therese getting recognised? Um, I don't think so, uh, because... Well, A, potentially, like, the people who would know her specifically are back in Brittany for the most part mm-hmm. um if they if there were people who were posted in Paris from Brittany they would know Joseph but they wouldn't necessarily know myself or Therese so mm. not really at this stage not to say it won't happen but it's not front of mind right excellent now. it's not front of mind uh you've been letting it go but let's just see how well your luck has held up you've been the one who's sort of organizing this deception so why don't you make me a disguise check uh, and as the okay. door opens you might have a very worried sister okay I mean, not least of which, I'm about to rock up home with a blood-covered puppy and be yeah, like, Hi, I found a, a dog! A, a We've got another thing. thing to feed now, sorry about it. Uh, disguise, you say. Okay, hey. everything's fine. You know, you're, you're sticking to the... You, you, you've you actually tracked down where you know um, some uh, Breton families are and you're making sure not to sort of frequent those areas um, and everything's fine. When you come back, Therese is, 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 is happy to see you. Says, you've, been, you've been out all night. Are you, are you everything all right? So, is that a dog? Uh, wait, this is a... I, uh, yeah, it's been quite a night. Um, but I do have a puppy, and I do have some uh, some fresh-ish uh, bread. Oh, you've had a successful 
I'll, evening, I'll get out morning, like one yeah. of the chunks because I did say I'd use the other two for like provisioning for the for the group for mm-hmm. the troops. But I'll get out my chunk and like put it on the table and be like, I, I am I do it again. <laughs> Uh, Therese is very happy to see you. Uh, the two of you will share a meal. Um, she has to go out pretty early to go and wait in the lines to get water, uh, but she will thank you. The two of you can briefly embrace, and then she will um, uh, you sh- sh- share some food, and she, she heads off, and uh, you're going to fall asleep pretty soon. Yeah. Um, but I will first... I will give the, the puppy a bath. <laughs> yes, ex- I was going to say. It gets a bath. It gets, like, dried. I am falling asleep as this is happening. I think I, like, curl up on whatever equates to a couch and or mattress and or something. And the puppy's just going to fall asleep on my chest. Absolutely. It, it, it adores you immediately. Mm-hmm. It seems to have uh, decided that you are protecting it. Uh, dogs need a name. Do you yep. have a name for this for this puppy? Yep, I'm going with something traditional. Titu. Titu. Okay, fantastic. Little Titu. Um, curls well, that up. Either that or Rex, but I don't think something associated with monarchy is the best decision for my dog. <laughs> does does Titu translate to, get... to something? Uh, uh, just, just like, just like a, a, like, it's a oh. shortening of a surname. I looked it up before and I was like, that sounds Cute. like something kind of, you know, like Coco or Fifi or something like that. Like, titu. Titu, yeah, that, that's fine. Um, so, brilliant. Um, uh, Tichu curls up with you, you fall asleep, um, and the sound of your neighbors banging on walls, uh, is like a gentle lullaby. Excuse um, me? Pressy! We. <laughs> <laughs> oui. Uh, what about you? Tell us. What about me? I think, um, well, uh, Pressy lives with his adoptive father, uh, Father Jacques Pressy. Um, who I imagine probably lives in a church. Is that fair to say? Because there are uh, a lot of yeah, that makes sense. You, you there would be there would be quarters at at a, at a church. Do you also live in the church? Are you sh- do you have like because the, often priests' quarters have like several several beds and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, I, I think so because um, I was adopted uh, by my father in order to raise me up into the priesthood, um, which didn't work out. Uh, my passionate nature was ill-suited for the church. There you go. I don't know what that means, but uh, I'll leave that as next to the reader. Sing to solve problems. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yes, I was too rambunctious during the hymns, um, and so I, I turned my passion to the soldiery instead. Uh, but yeah, I guess it would make sense that um, I feel a duty to to repay what the what the church and what Jock has given me. So I would be living with them for just a little bit longer um, and, and actually earning, earning my keep now. Great, fantastic. So you come home and um, I, I think Jacques as a, as a priest is probably a very proper man. He's probably up and has eaten um, and has, uh, you know, he's getting ready for the services that he will perform throughout the day. But he's also a very caring father. You know, he adopted you. So there's some food set aside for you oh. um, and, and, and he will greet you. Um, he probably sits down to say grace with you, despite the fact that you've already eaten. Um, uh, he will ask, you know, you I know you're working at the, the graveyards. How goes the task of burying bodies? Uh, it goes, it goes. Are they being respectful? Are they, are they being good, good Christians? <laughs> Father, I, I think there is, there, there are just too many. Just too many. Uh, no, they, they don't get the, the care they deserve, but uh, nor does most of the city today. I, I, I think you are right, and it's, uh, it's all we can do to try and give the care that we can to the ones that pass through our churches or through our protection, in your case. But it um, wasn't even the, the dead, Father. Um, there was, there was uh, a man in, in the catacombs. I think he was lost and driven mad. Um, I wanted to help him, but Saint Jean said no. Man in the catacombs. Um, I, it is truly, it's truly sad. It speaks to the state of France that people are forced to take refuge below the city amongst the bones and the dead. I, I, I fear, I fear for Paris. I, I really do. 
if you wish it, I could organize to have a, to have some, some members of my church go down, try and find this man, offer some food, offer some supplies. I think that would be good, yes. Um, maybe I, I could try to speak to my sergeant and, and, and at least have him allow entry. Yes, yes, that that sounds good. But you are tired now, uh, my, my my son. You you yeah. um, rest, and uh, we will speak of this. We we'll speak of this when you return. Um, uh, I will I will pray for your lost man. Thank you, Father. And then he turns away, and, and, and he will leave, and you can uh, eat and and rest. Um, anything you want to do before crashing? No. No. <laughs> I uh, crash a. Okay. Excellent. Um. Is is Pressy religious? Um, no more than the usual amount. He likes the songs. That's for okay. sure. So you were you weren't suited uh, to the church because of, of temperament, not because you didn't necessarily believe um, in in the values or the, the yeah, ways. Yeah, I, I guess he um, felt that uh, reading books and preaching, while valuable, doesn't actually affect enough good in the world. You know, okay. And the effect good by by uh, actually getting out in the world trying to change it. And you're out there doing that for sure. Yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, you head to bed. You fall asleep. Uh, and right now is when, if you hadn't gotten an extreme success uh, on your constitution check last session, you would start to cough uh, just a little as the tuberculosis uh, takes hold. But fortunately, you're totally fine. Pressy didn't catch TB. TB caught Pressy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, and Renault, let's jump back to you as you return to your house. By now, uh, you know, the, there are people properly out in the streets. It, it's mid-morning um, and you've been gone all night. Uh, you arrive home. Uh, what, what do you think you'll find? Is your, is your wife going to be annoyed? Is she, is she understanding? Will your children oh, want to I... see you? I was very clear. I mean, my original intent was that I'd probably be working all night shifting bodies. Right. And if anything, I'm probably home earlier than they expected because I would have been... I, I think I would have expected to move bodies all night, catch some sleep in, like, wherever we can there. Like, I don't know if there's, like, officers' quarters or something. Mm -hmm. uh, and then work through the day. So this is a... This is a this is bonus Thierry. Oh, as far okay, as fantastic. Concerned. This is extra Thierry. Uh, so um, as I'm walking like down the street towards my home, I think I'm, I mean, we've lived, we've moved in here a, what, probably like a couple of years ago now. Yeah, but you've I been think, there for a while. I think I've been so busy working. It's my wife that knows any of the locals. So like I recognize, I'm like, that guy's my neighbor, I think. So he gets a curt nod and then I sort of walk past him. It's, it's a little awkward and I, I don't fit in here as comfortably as I do either in my own home or then with uh, the other soldiers. Yes, uh, you're a little out of place, despite this being supposedly where you should be. Yeah. Um, you walk up the stairs and it, as you have every day since you got home, you still have to like do a double take to get the right door uh, yeah. into, yeah. into your, your, uh, your apartment. Um, and you come through, uh, you can hear sort of yells of delight. Your your girls are, you know, ecstatic to see you. They, they obviously are, and they, they sprint over. Um, your, your your wife, um, Marguerite, is happy to see you too, although she's a little more like, you know, you, you can't touch him until he has washed. <laughs> and, and we'll, and we'll uh, you know, pull them away and, 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 and you know, give you a, like, a, a, a touch upon the shoulder uh, before you have to go wash yourself and then then you you will be greeted and can share a breakfast with your family yeah and i think like as i as i come in as soon as my wife's uh distracted uh i ignore everything she said and i pick up the two girls uh, i take them through we have like a little washroom and i seat one of them on the like the basin and the other one on the bath so as i bathe i can or like as i would just wash myself up with like a face washer uh, i can just talk to them a bit i don't think i get much time to hang out with my family so i value every moment so it's me talking to like like just what have you been up to what bug have you caught uh what piece of dirt have you eaten you small child papa, papa, i got uh, this rock do you like it it's it's, it's so good it is, <laughs> it's a great his rock. name is louis 
it's a good name. It's a good name. It's a long lasting name. <laughs> It's adorable. It's cute. I'll tell you what. Um, we'll say Olivier is your your older child, who's yeah. about eight, and and, and uh, Lucy is about six. Um, Olivier has got to the age where she started to sort of get interested in things. Why mm. don't you pick a single skill from 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 the Call of Cthulhu character sheet that she started to show an interest in? So if we ever need her to roll something, she yeah. actually has a few points uh, in something. Probably artillery. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, Papa, <laughs> I found your grenade. <laughs> I'll bring the machinery. Uh, I think I think natural world. I think it's kind of a we have a little bit of space here. It's not a ton, but compared to so many others in Paris, they are able to go out and you know play with trees and leaves, uh, and she values that. Um. Uh, yeah, so she's talking about everything that she's found. Um, you're having a great time uh, with them. Uh, Lucy seems a little like. She's she's doing the kind of clinging to you that she does when she's had an argument with her mum, yeah. um, and you pick up on that. And you're just sort of, sort of very nice to her. And after the two of you have spoken for a while, you come out and there's some food that's been uh, laid out for you. And you 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 speak with Marguerite, who gives you a quick update on everything. Um, <clears throat> do you get along with Marguerite? Yeah, I, I do. I don't think we were married due to love. I think it was a. I I think a range would be too far, but like practical sort of matter yep. it's just what you do uh so i think uh, we are very good friends <laughs> well, <laughs> we no, have you two know, children together <laughs> better better than a lot can say so yeah, she's perfectly right. happy to see you um uh it gives you a kiss on the cheek and and, and we'll we'll tell you sort of you know some business about that the household um but she has two things she wants to say the first thing yes. she says is listen i i um was lucy came back uh, today and she had something that really worried me and she goes over to one of the drawers and fumbles around she takes a small piece of paper out um, and it is with a sinking feeling that she reveals uh, one of the pamphlets from the printer's press oh, shit. Uh, this is one of the ones the dirt and grime has mostly got rid of it but you can still see in now dried blood know your place printed across it it seems oh, that these papers are becoming distributed throughout the city uh i i take it from her uh I, I look over it and then i like scrunch it up and jam it into my own pocket so that it won't stay here and i say these spread uh faster than we thought they would this is nothing to be concerned about it is being dealt I with i am looking into it the capitan is looking into it there is nothing to be worried about. It is people being unruly because they are hungry. Nothing. I, I trust you, uh, Tilly. I, I, I do, and I know you'll make the right decisions. I also know you are on a bound and dutiful. I just want to say, and, and I will say this but once, out, out of respect for, for, for you, and, and then I will, will trust you once again, but it, it, it would be silly of me not to voice my opinion. If, if we need to flee Paris, I can't get the girls out without you. And, and I, I, if things go wrong, then they need to go right enough for you that you can help us get north or even across to, <laughs> somewhere that isn't here no no listen this this will not happen this it, everything is going to be okay i'm not going to entertain the ideas especially not in my own home i, okay. I come here I, to rest out there i will deal with the problems but here i do not want any more she 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 nods um you know she seems you can see that she's worried but she bites she bites her lip um, and the two of you have a, you know, a pleasant, if um, slightly worried from her part, uh, conversation uh, before she has to go off to probably stand in the same queue as uh, Therese to yeah. get water for the day, um, okay. and you can crash. Um, you'll all awaken in the mid-afternoon where you will have time to undertake any extracurricular activities that you would like to before your Ooh. meeting in Versailles tomorrow. This is the kind of space in that Cthulhu scenario where if you want to go and do a little research, you do. Of course, 
it's a little difficult in Paris to sort of barge in and 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 um, start doing research, particularly if none of you if none of you are particularly scholarly. But what would you all like to be getting up to? And it is perfectly reasonable to say, I take a little bit of time to rest, relax, and catch time. up with myself. In fact, let, let's mechanize that. If you all are going to spend time literally just taking it easy, spending time with your families, um, I'll, give you a, uh, I'll give you a bonus die on the first sanity roll that you make uh, in the following day. Well, I can't say no to that. All right. Uh, excellent. So what does your rest and relaxation look like, Pressy? Um, probably just like cleaning up around the church. Yeah. Making myself useful. Lending excellent. a hand. Sweeping. You, you join in the services. You, you yeah. have a sing. That's um, right. Brilliant. Oh, oh, Lordy, do I have a sing. Oh, per perfect. Perfect. Um, uh, and, and yeah, your, 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 your father uh, is, is incredibly pleased to have you there. Um, and you know, you end up, you, you actually will say you get, you do end up doing a bit of maintenance work on the roof and, and, and get, you know, finally fix that squeaking door sort of thing. Delightful. All right. Um, what about the other two? Um, I will, I will also take you up on the bonus, uh, sanity. So I will, I will spend my time. Um, I think, I think Hugel reads. Right. Um, so I think there is some reading that happens. Um, of what kind of reading we shall leave that well enough alone, because I think that would probably get me in a lot of trouble with, you know, the <laughs> king. Um, but general, mm -hmm. like, I don't think it's I don't think it's that overt, but it's definitely like, hmm. Mm. Uh, anyway, reading. How to construct uh, and operate a guillotine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Vive la France. Oh, yeah. uh, Vive la revolution. Um, no, so that I'll probably, depending on what, well, we have the evening, then when Therese comes home, I'm like, I have decided to call it uh, Titu. And I'm going to spend like a bunch of time playing with the poppy and yep. teaching it some basic things like sit and and that's probably it right oh. now because <laughs> i don't think like i don't know if you've tried to teach puppies but it takes a while they've got like one in them at a time yeah, yeah. so uh, slowly next. teaching the puppy some basic nothing complex because i can't train animals and yeah it's really fun um uh you 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 jump you you end up you know jumping in therese comes home and the two of you have that thing where you've got a new pet and you're just both completely obsessed with it mm -hmm. um let's mechanize this a little bit uh you you know um uh renault you got to give olivier a single skill why don't we give uh why don't we give the Operator t2 a machinery. single dog skill artillery i i approve uh Demolitions. i feel like hmm rifle slash shotgun I mean, a dog Cthulhu skill. Cthulhu Mythos. <laughs> uh, I mean, I mean, I guess, like... I'm, okay, if I was going to min-max this, I'd say brawl, but I'm not going to, because I don't <laughs> yeah, think I'm going to start teaching I'll, my dog to know, brawl. Well, the, brawl, the dog will have, like, a negative two build, so, you know, it will not be yeah. fantastic. It could um, brawl with other dogs, is what it could do. Spot yeah, hidden no, no. would make I, sense. Oh, yeah, yeah actually, yeah, around. spot hidden. I, I right. like that because I'm I'm really good or at track. spot hidden, so that would make sense. Yep. Spot hidden. What's oh track? I'm not good at track, but I feel like yeah, spot hidden to begin with, and then maybe track later if I keep training. But really? I'm really good at spot hidden, so I feel like that's something I could train the dog to do. Okay, fantastic. Um, so yeah, you, that that goes ahead. You 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 have you've still got so, like enough bread. You're at like rationing points at this stage. Um, all of you are actually kind of okay for food um, because uh, Hugel, you got, brought bread home from the baker that you saved. Um, Renault, you are the only one who has sort of the means to be able to be okay. Um, and uh, Pressy, you're at the church and there is a kind of element of, um, you know, you can assume a certain amount of, of food security here. Although uh, a lot of the food that you and your father get is given to the poor. Um, so you're not exactly well off eating well, but you're not starving. I like it. Uh, also just 
as an aside, uh, my character specifically said is a good bargainer and a good forager. So I yes, feel like sure. we get away with eating better than we should for the money that we have. Absolutely. That's the, that's the ticket, isn't it? Um, Renault, uh, yeah. what about you? You going to do something I or are you going to take me up on my generous offer? rest because Paris never rests. <laughs> Will the unruly okay. mob lay down their sleeps, torches? Okay. Will these no. pamphlets <laughs> collect themselves? No. Uh, I, no. I get like, you know, a few hours of sleep. And I roll out of bed, put on my uniform, and I get back to work. Uh, I think I report to the captain, see how things are going, and then, unless there's anything specific to be doing, I spend yes. the day like patrolling and if i see anyone with those damn pamphlets i'm going up to them i'm taking them and i'm saying this is nothing to concern yourself about this is being handled and i am the presence that shows that this is being handled because here i am handling it um you will report to captain manlon um Wait. and actually there is something that you can do he Ooh. will send you um to work with uh dr rigol um, who is doing, uh, he, he's specifically going to be doing some uh, autopsy work upon the bodies, um, and then he's going to go back to the catacombs. Uh, so he's sort of like, he's basically like, Rigaud is just, he is kind of the rock star at the moment. He is the one that everybody needs to be taken care of. Uh, he is the king's favorite doctor. He needs protection, but also I am concerned he might kill over and die at any point. He's working himself to death. So stay with him sure i will uh i will escort him where he needs to go um so you spend a you spend a whole day with regal uh, does, does renault get a report about some uh good good parishioners trying to get into the catacombs with loaves of bread saying um, that they were under orders from uh from from private pressy that is a very good point we'll jump to that at the end yeah, but i think that'll happen once good. you get back to the catacombs <clears throat> but um Going back. Uh, <laughs> but, um... Uh, I just want to grab some pamphlets. I don't want to go into the spooky-ass <laughs> labyrinth. Um, spending time with uh, Lucien Rigaud, um, he will he will speak to you extensively. Um, can I get you to make a, a interpersonal skill of some kind? Yeah, uh, I'm looking for a charm or a persuade. Uh, if you do not... No, I, I'm not looking no. for an intimidate. Do you I, have... A... I am actually very... Oh, my God. I'm more persuasive than I am intimidating. Huh. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't know it to look at me. Uh, here we go. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's good. That's good. That's All good. Right, yeah, persuade. that's a success. Yeah. That's a success. That's good. No, what was so that you... Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> it was a it was a pleasant surprise. Okay. All right. It was a, a mark of uh, approval. Um. Uh. You. So you start to get along pretty well with Rigol. Sure. Um, the, the, the two of you, you, the two of you talk, talk, um, you can see properly that this guy is like sick. He is super pale. Um, and he's, he's wearing, um, the sort of white powdered makeup of, of, um, of the, the, the people at the time, but I mean, like he's good. pale underneath that. So, yeah. so yeah. Um, shit leaded. do I get a, do I get a vibe of his, uh, political, stance i mean he's clearly benefited from being the king's best so i imagine he has an allegiance to the current monarchy make a psychology check yeah sure um i'm just seeing if there's anything else i could make a case for i don't think there is but bam oh okay um so currently this guy is an absolute firm monarchist whether that is because of you know personally he may have other views uh his views might change he might have reasons for me doing this but at the minute he is he is he, you two gel perfectly politically i'm the also two of you will yeah this is an opportunity to walk like and personally escort someone so important this is like this is career move this is the stepping stone i'm gonna i'm doing i'm on best behavior uh, so I, I'm, I'm making the most of this, and I think that's like the persuade is me being very, uh, uh, I agree with everything he says. I'm a real yes man, uh, yep. around these sort of people. Um, so, absolutely. Yeah. No, this is, this is good. And, and, and he will, um, he will, he will walk you, walk you through, um, and, uh, uh, chat with you quite a bit. 
eventually um the two of you will make your way down towards the catacombs um where you will encounter some people with uh uh that that pressy has sent your way but first one little scene occurs which uh, i want to mention sure. um as the two of you are crossing through a couple of Parisian streets, rattling down uh, one of the cobblestone alleyways, you see uh, a carriage. And it is the same carriage that you saw oh, uh, swinging past outside the, uh, the, the catacombs and then that you presume stopped outside the printers. Your eyes widen, but Rigol's do too. And he grabs at your arm as soon as he sees it. And, and and you can see in his face that there there is like panic as well. The carriage keeps rolling. He's not doing anything. He's frozen still, but he's holding you very tightly. Um, I uh, let go of my grip on like one of the, the, the pistols, which I didn't even realize I had, uh, as in the, the hold, I knew I had the gun. Uh, and I say, uh, did you know that carriage, the man inside it? Um, he, he works his mouth around for a little bit and then he says, it's, uh, um, you let's go, um, uh, tomorrow, uh, Malon, he, I will be there too. We, he kind of looks down, looks back at you. You succeeded your persuade check. You've gained this man's trust a little bit. And after taking a breath, he will say, uh, that carriage belongs to Comte Fenlick. He is not a good man. Count Fenlick, I don't... Did, would I recognize that name from any... Make a credit rating check. Yeah. You mean this old thing? <laughs> that old thing. Ooh, yeah, success. Okay. Um, you have heard uh, the, the, the name Count Fenlick in regards to very, very excessive parties. Um, there was a, a, a pretty high up general uh, or, or commander, someone high up in France's military, uh, that you who spoke of being invited to one of Fenleek's parties, and he was ecstatic because uh, he was going to be this complete debaucherous event, and he was going to have all this wine, and he'd heard all these stories about it, and supposedly uh, he, he engaged while he was there in activity that. Uh, was spoken about uh, and you don't exactly know what it was, but apparently it was so debaucherous that he was, he lost his position and was fired and has since, you know, had to leave the army and is presumably, you know, without a job and in a bad way now. So this dude goes off. This dude goes, this guy, this guy goes hard. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, and I would, do I get a like slightly like this, it's un, It's not just uncomfortable and excessive to, to like frat party. It's like slightly ominous, creepy. Uh, yeah, this this I mean, is, I've, this I've, this is like, been weird twice when I've seen him. So I'm yeah. Or, this know, is, like this is like uh, probably the vibe you get is is like blasphemy um, from this. Oh, shit. Like 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 um, uh, you you the one of the rumors about what this general may have done is that he he was you know um, uh, he 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 was caught you know um uh you, you, I, i'm trying to throw up something you know dressed as a virgin mary or something yeah like that. yeah yeah um uh and so things that would get you in a lot of trouble it, also just uh, the whole the like hugely excessive party while paris is starving is a bit uncouth well uh, uh sadly for aristos that's pretty oh, okay, common right. uh but the, the, the it's more the behavior happening at the party uh the king is having very wild uh, parties you've probably been invited to one very luckily yourself and seen the excess but since you're I'm a monarchist you another. saw it and went oh this is great look at them um, look at the riches that they have they will share them with all of us okay exactly um, you'll dart away towards the graveyard. And I want to ask uh, two quick questions to uh, our other investigators quickly. Um, so, Pressy, did you actually... did you Have you organised, like, a formal thing? Or have you just told your your friends to rock up? Um, well, you know... No, because I've said I've had a day off. So uh, I don't think Pressy has been actively organizing anything. It was, it was Jacques idea. Um, so I think maybe Jacques 
organized it and sent, sent some folks out with some bread uh, with, with Pressy's kind of blessing, but, uh, but no, he's had a day off. Okay. Um, and uh, s- that is good to know. And secondly, uh, Hugel, can you make a spot hit and check very quickly for me um, as you spend your day at home relaxing? And we know you're good at spot hidden. Um, uh, Apparently you... very, very <laughs> good. Oh, I don't have the voice turned on. I apologize, because I... Is that almost an extreme? Uh, yeah, I am not sure. With over a 70, it would be pretty close, I think. Okay. Um... Let me, I'm going to roll again, because I just turned the voice on, just to see what, what the, the thing is. Sure. With the stuff. Oh, too Same short. Same thing. Um, an extreme will not, will okay, not, um, will not um, uh, help you any... Any, any more. Cool. It's funny, you actually got the same roll twice. That's yep. amazing. Um, uh, <laughs> also, a reminder, turn on verbose rolling. Franz, <laughs> um, So, as you are looking out the window um, uh, once or twice throughout the day, you will see uh, a couple of those pamphlets uh, that are starting to circulate. Not just the ones with the blood on them, but more of the original ones that are getting hung up. It seems like this message is spreading um how how dangerous or unreasonable would it be for joseph for hugel either like themselves or via therese because i expect therese has similar beliefs as probably does the actual joseph Mm -hmm. um to have an like an in or like not an in but like a connection to the the people's government like that um as in like has been to has gone and stood in the crowds when a people are speaking you, kind of thing uh, not uh, like sure we, we can we can say that therese is is, is part of that it will be very dangerous then no okay. <laughs> i uh, think uh, i feel like she's like i want to do it and you girls like mm, yeah uh, nah. uh, yeah <laughs> Like, and whether or not she does at some point sneak off and do the thing, because she's spirited and I am only a sibling. Who knows? I'll leave I'll leave that option open to you, Jim, if you want to. Excellent. Oh, uh, more things to play yeah, with. Perfect. Sure. But, like, Hugel, in that case, is, like, knows about it, is, like, something to keep an ear out for, uh, is probably, like, tangentially listening for information about it um to to keep the ear to the ground as it will yes uh, as it were but is yeah Therese like i want to go and you uh. guys like mm, no don't so do you are aware of this but you're not darting down and you know like tearing down posters you're not um you're you're sort of i would say like hugo is not against the posters without the blood on them like mm. hugo's like yeah that's they think that's right. They think the people should be represented. It's just that it's dangerous to you, go and involve themselves at this point. You are also seeing that the, the posters with the blood on them are kind of having the effect of radicalizing the people. Like they're being yeah. put up and being, and you know, look what they look what they've done. Look what they they you know turning our message to. I don't think Hugel has a problem with that. All right, fantastic. I think it's a thing of like, as as we said last session, on duty. Does what the sergeant says, follows the rules, off duty, personal time. It's, yeah, that's your time. You can do whatever you want. And I'm not, uh, you know, I might look at them and be like, if I was on duty, perhaps a, pers- a sergeant would tell me to take this down. But I'm not on duty, so. And you continue to play with Titu. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> in, Such a good puppy. <laughs> in, um, uh, uh, in your work, Renault, you continue across the catacombs. Uh, uh, re- uh, Rigo will oversee some basic be- details, and a small delegation of uh, parishioners from a from a local church come forward, um, and and uh, R- Rigo basically t- sends you to deal with them. And they'll come up and they beseech you. Uh, they have heard that there is somebody wandering lost uh, in the catacombs, and and they have come with a small bit of you know bread and a blanket, and they're hoping to 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 leave it down there to be donated. Mm. They ask. We, we just want to go in. We'll be. We'll be a few minutes in and out. Uh, could I? Would I be able to ask Pressy to make a persuasion <laughs> test through 
these people to make yeah, their case. Is sure. that fair? Because I think my view was that that dude down there bailed on the French military or something. I don't really want to acknowledge him in any way. But, you know, if they have a good case. Swayed or they something are like but humble. Charm. They are but humble parishioners, peasants, if you will. And it is out of the goodness of their heart that they're trying to convince you. That, so uh, is appropriate. <laughs> they, are, they are pure of heart. I think they're trying to charm you. Yeah, I think charm for sure yeah. works. There you okay. go. Yeah, I think uh, <laughs> I think initially I just like I say no, but I think they, you know, they're at their, you know, exactly like you said, yep, they're yep. good people. Oh, I'm sorry. You know? Does this does the sergeant need a point of luck to make it a hard success? No, 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 no. It's it's very it's good. Thing. Uh, okay, I think they they win me over, and I I will acquiesce. I think I used that word correctly, uh, and I'll let them like bring it down and leave it somewhere. But I escort them the whole way. And I am on, I am nervous as you we go into the catacombs. Tense. I have a lantern high. And as we get a few steps in, like just past the, the darkness, okay. I go, okay, heal will work. Just leave it and let's go. If someone they, wants they, it, they will find it. They listen to you um, and they thank you. They say, they say you, are, you, are, you are a good man and they, they utter a small prayer for you. Um, Rigol is kind of like, doesn't really know why you're doing this, but whatever. Um, he will turn and, and head back. Um, uh, you will continue your day's work. Um, a couple of hours later, as you're leaving, you will see one of the, um, the, the, the people who's been working inside the catacombs with a blanket around them, munching on the bread as they sort of wander away. To be honest, they um, probably needed it as well. So <laughs> whatever. Yeah. All right. So each of nice. you sleep. Uh, uh, Hugel and Pressy, the two of you will have a bonus die on the next sanity roll that you have to make tomorrow. Um, meanwhile, uh, you, uh, Renault, have managed to endear yourself to Rigol, the doctor. Tie myself closer to the monarchy. I'm only going exactly. up. Exactly. Only, yeah, it's 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 all going to Some stairs be... to a platform with a very <laughs> large shot. It's all coming up, Thierry. Yeah. <laughs> Until it all comes off. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you're talking about. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, Everything's fine. So the collection of you probably rally the next morning at the catacombs because you need to head southwest to get to Versailles. It is a long trip. It's about uh, 10 miles down. Um, so the collection of you will gather up and uh, early in the morning and start to make the long trek. Can I throw uh, to the, the map for some context, Jim? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, although Versailles, I do not believe it's on, it's on it's the in, map. It's in the top right, on top left. Right oh, so, okay, excellent. See this little map? We are in Paris, and we need to get all the way down to Versailles. So it's like a proper little... Oh, get a, that's get a, a while. So they're, so they're not in the Palais Royal in the middle of Paris. No, 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 no. no. That, is a, that is a different... So do we want to split oh. an Uber or... <laughs> um, you would what probably have. Um, you would probably that have sounds arranged. German to me. <laughs> <laughs> and several Funny years too German. early. I will alert the king. <laughs> um, oh no! Um, so um, uh, the collection of you will um, uh, have some horses arranged for you. Is to the make captain the trip. coming with us? Uh, the captain will meet you there. Okay. Um, and you will ride down along the pathway towards Versailles. Um, riding out of Paris is a little um, difficult. There's, you know, throngs of people going about their business. Specifically, um, you will go past uh, a, 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 a section which is kind of like a... Um, basically like an open air uh it looks kind of like an open air market actually what it is it is it is the tax farmers general which is basically an area that people from the outskirts of paris who want to come in have to gather up to pay these huge custom fees while they try to get in towards Les Isles and the central markets. And you can see people and they do not have much produce and they are arguing and they're like, you know, I'm, I'm, I've made this trip. If I pay this much, I, I, I will make no money. I, I'm, I'm paying to give my food to people. And, and the, the, you know, well-fed tax officials go, ah, the king demands it. Rah! It's very, um, you know, uh, stuff yeah, is not good here. Yep, the system yeah. works. Um, 
you'll actually have to probably dismount to weave your way through here until you get out and then you can break down on the open road where you'll go through a section of uh, countryside um, before, you know, at last you begin to weave through some nicer areas that aren't as kind of broken down as the outskirts of the big city, head through some woods until oh. the road opens up, it becomes nicer, and eventually before you, you will see the outskirts of the Palace of Versailles. You go from poverty to decadence in a moment. The collection of you dismount your horses and you will hand them to some servants who are at the gate and you walk through into the most magnificent, beautiful, literally palatial area that you can imagine. Mm. There are tables set out in the garden that are covered with food, cheeses, wines, meats, and they are sitting there with no one near them, with, you know, insects going around and the, the, the food going off, because it has to be there just in case one of the, the Aristos should deign to walk past and they have to have food near them at all times. The building is absolutely beautiful. It is the peak of architectural beauty. Everyone who walks past is dressed elegantly and wonderfully in these amazing outfits that put the collection of what the collection of you wear to shame uh, this is truly the the epicenter of wealth and debauchery and decadence in the entire country well perhaps except for uh comp fenelik's home um Crying thank you for a revolution yeah, yeah, the versailles palace absolutely beautiful thank you very much uh dave that is exactly what it looks like Pretty it spooky. is Oh, there it is. It the is, viewers at home seeing this? Yep. It is something very, very special. Goodness. How do all of you feel about this? A uh, bit icky. Yeah? Yeah. You're, you're looking around. Um, the, the orchestras sitting in small gazebos are around don't, don't do anything for you? Oh... Uh sad because i've seen what gets donated to the church of the poor and it's mm. it's moldy damp crusts of bread it's yeah. like whatever people can spare to 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 go to folks who uh who don't have anything to spare just walking through the the palace grounds you see laid out more food than will ever be donated to the church in your lifetime that will be going off and thrown out today it's it's pretty miserable. I'm sad now. Yeah, France is also broke as well. The nation is in, is bankrupt, um, and and uh, it's a real problem. What about the other two, uh, Hugel, Renault? How's your monarchist tendencies feeling at the minute? Uh, I'm pretty uh, indoctrinated in general and fairly blind <laughs> to the sins of the monarchy because I truly believe. Uh, the, you know, a bit of, bit with a bit of bootstrap pulling, you know, like I have promoted myself this far and a, uh, I think a part of me was always like, you know, that I'm only another couple steps and then we'll be happy, then we'll be comfortable. I think this is a level of excess and unnecessary extravagance that even Thierry is a little shaken. Like this is so unnecessary and to see it being wasted when we just came from Paris where people are starving is a little sickening. Uh, so I d don't think I showed too much of it, but this isn't on. Yeah, uh, that is totally fair enough. So even even the most diehard monarchists amongst you are, are shaken by what you see here. Hugel, what about you? I am on duty. I don't think anything. Hmm. Very good. Uh, yeah. No. Brilliant. You. But uh, in private, perhaps Hugel thinks to themselves. These are the wet fish that took our country. All right, I guess that is fair. Uh, yes, this is. Uh, you you are holding yourself together. You're very professional, but uh, there's some things that could be said about this place. I, <laughs> I would say, g given that I'm very good at disguise and persuade, I don't think it shows in my face. But there is an absolute air of like disdain and resentment. Um, um, like that's the internal, but yeah. outside I'm on duty, so you know it's this is. I don't see anything amiss on duty that my sergeant does not tell me to look at. Totally, totally. Um, eyes fixed ahead, the collection of you head forward. Um, 
you can see as you approach the interior grounds and you head across these beautifully manicured lawns, uh, you know that approximately where Captain Malon will be meeting you, there will have been some instructions left. Um, Next uh, to the chocolate fountain. I mean, there are <laughs> things like that, you know. You, there would be, what they would be is they would be like plates of, uh, like giant silver plates with like wine and champagne or, or ba- upon them so that they look like fountains and things like that. Um, there would also be literal marble fountains. Oh, absolutely. Like if I'm remembering there's... the Gardens of Versailles, there's like proper... There are fountains, absolutely. Yes, in fact, you can see one of them in that image. Uh, I'm just going to show it again. Uh, back right of the um, of the, uh, mm. of the picture. Anyway, um, uh, there are aristocrats around you and they are sitting about. Uh, they are surrounded quite often by servants, so the collection of you don't look too out of place walking through, you know. There's there's the help is always present. But you can hear them gossiping uh, bit by bit. Um, can I get either Hugel or Renault to make a listen check? Because, Pressy, you are totally distracted. As you walk past one of these groups of aristocrats, you spot the most wonderful, beautiful amazing woman in the world and melody Melody catches your eye (laughs) as the two of you share just a a moment's glance um tell us a little bit bit about melody what's she like oh how how can i uh, begin how how Uh, can i compare thee to a summer's day (laughs) yes yes uh she's she's just the best She's, yeah, she's, she's tops. <laughs> she's wonderful. Uh, Pressy isn't much of a poet, you know, but uh, if you asked him, he would say her hair shines like blonde hair <laughs> when it catches the moonlight bouncing off her head like uh, like sunlight. <laughs> uh, her nose shaped like a, what one a would expect. Button. <laughs> <laughs> A button on on a on a on a blouse, um, which is sewn very well. <laughs> Fortunately, uh, she doesn't love you for your poetry. Why, why does she? Oh, love thank you? goodness. Why does she love you, Pressy? What has made um, the two of you just perfect for each other? Appearance eighty five. Yeah, you, you're. Uh, Pressy's just hot. <laughs> you're really attractive. I'm a good looking. I'm a good looking chap. You've also and got bel- some good charm too. I think you're just a really yeah. nice guy. <laughs> well, I mean, the charm mostly comes from the looks. Um, honestly, I think probably that's that's all the Aristos care about, right? Is uh, is a, a good looking young soldier to to wheel out on special hey, occasions. It's 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 1789. You're all going to be dead in 15 years anyway. <laughs> Uh, the, <laughs> love. Ah, who needs it? Um, yeah. Although you two do love each other, that 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 uh, very much so. Yeah, be- because we have like these very uh, storybook ideas of romance. Mm. Um, you know, the the the, uh, the the Aristo daughter heiress and the strapping young soldier. We've all read those stories, so you know, obviously, this is the way it's meant to be. Um, so speaking of, as, 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 of the word heiress, um, surrounding um, Melody, there's a couple of other aristocrats and they're all engaged in, you know, very um, uh, dry conversation, you know, talking about very... Yeah, exactly. You know, Dave's getting the, the, the attitude for God, and muttering around. Um, she, all she can do is just share a glance with you. But so much is said with that one glance. Oh, yes. Uh, meanwhile, right next... Uh, to uh, Melody is Comte Benoit. Uh, that is her father. And he is scowling at you with a face like crumpled leather. Uh, he, uh, he's, uh, he's seen you, he's seen this look and his jowls boil with rage. Uh, you are forced to spin around and you hear on the wind the faintest uh, of sighs as Melody loses sight of you. Um, Anything else you want to do, or will you just tear yourself forward? <laughs> subtle, nice. but subtle, subtle. Subtle. Okay. All right. Perfect. Um, she smiles back. Let's see what you can, uh, the three of you continue. Um, how did? How did, uh, did? Which of the two of you is going to make that listen check? Uh-uh. Uh, you want to go for a Hugo? Sure. I, I I have no idea what, which of our Ignore listens that. is better. Miss Clark. Latin. And you can make this a bonus die because any, uh, effectively Renault is helping you. Any so Latin about Jim? Oh, 
Oh, oh wow. Uh, okay, well. Does something, does something happen on a critical or is it just uh, like. I had, a, I, had a, I had a house rule, which I thought was a real rule for a very long while, that you'd go up by a d10. Uh, when you crit, unfortunately, uh, that is not the correct rules for Call of Cthulhu. Do you do you hear Pressy muttering about buttons and moonlight? <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, I like. Even if I do though, it literally says on my character sheet what I think of Pressy is. His romance. His romances are so cute. Oh, lovely. Like literally, it's just like, oh, you're so sweet. You're so you're so adorable. You're so Mine naive. Is... Mine is similar, but much, much less generous. <laughs> <laughs> uh... So I have here a list of, um, like, uh, the gossip of the aristocrats, and, you know, there's Ooh, various ways that you can get goss. each uh, little bit. But with a critical, and you didn't even need the bonus die, with a critical, um, you're going to hear you're gonna hear a couple of things, and, and uh, you, this is... Hugel, you're like... You're so stone-faced and moving forward and you don't hear anything, you're on duty, that people just feel comfortable talking around you. You blend into the furniture. Um, okay, so the first thing you hear... The I'm Dauphin get... is sick. He is really sick. You knew that he was unwell and he was being treated, uh, but they're, they're, everyone's expressing their concern and, and really can't wait until he is better. But with your listen check, uh, you will hear... In the hushedest of tones, he won't last more than a few days. I, I, I we need to be ready uh, for what happens next. The crown is weak already, and it can't handle losing its only heir. So that's a big deal. Um, secondly, you will overhear um, a, a there is a, there is an older woman, and she in one of this is once you've actually come inside wonderful you you can imagine what the palace is like on the interior you know uh ostentatious absolutely just overly pretentious just beautiful artworks everywhere well, um, the art's nice but everything else is just gaudy. Mm, pretty much um but you will uh, as, as you come in there is a there's this older woman and she's sitting with a group of uh, other women and she is talking uh quite loudly about um she's very happy how she is the perfect matchmaker um and you overhear her you overhear her mention this woman's name is madame de brienne and you overhear her mention uh that she recently uh orchestrated a a a rendezvous a secret a secret marriage uh, between um, a lowly soldier and a uh, upper class aristocrat, um, and Ooh. she is just the kind of person who is who might be able to help Pressy um, as she sits there to one side. Um, you will also hear a couple of servants uh, who are talking about, um, you know. Uh, uh, details of you know the logistics of managing the castle. You will overhear one of them say, uh, "Be very careful of Fenelik's carriage," um, and mention uh, presumably it is around. Um, so it's that around is here, like it's around already here. arrived. Yes, yeah, it, it, it is. It is here. Um, uh, and um, finally, you will hear a couple of aristocrats talking about a party coming up. Um, and it, one of them mentions the name Fenwick about the party. Uh, it appears to be uh, in a couple of days. Throw on another rager. Mm. That's everything you get with a critical. Um, the collection of you are strolling through Versailles at this point. Well, walking. Um, you do have a little bit to wander around if you would like. Um, if any of you would like to try and speak to anybody, do some investigation, you could check out that carriage. You could speak to uh, Madame de Brienne to help uh, try and set Pressy up with Melody, or you could head straight to your meeting with Capitaine Manon. Balls in your court. Can I assume that Pressy hasn't overheard this uh, matchmaker? Uh, no, you, you're too busy. You're off in the clouds, Pressy. You're dreaming. <laughs> so. All the information is with you, I think, currently, Hugo. Yeah, I know, but I don't give the orders, so... What so we you're going to keep quiet about it? Well, I don't know. There's, there's like, I'm not going to go off and talk to aristocrats when we're here on, like business and my sergeant's like walking in front of me like if the sergeant breaks up and does something maybe Hugo will but otherwise I will stick with the sergeant 
All right. Again, very um, good soldier. Uh, <laughs> Terrible do, do, with a with a rifle. Do good you soldier. mention you overheard talk of the, the of the information relating to Fenelik? So that you heard that Fenelik's carriage is there, and that you heard that a couple of aristocrats talking about uh, Fenelik's party. Do do I do I know who Fenelik is? Because I wasn't like that's true. We have. Would you have shared that information, um, uh, yeah. Renault? Yeah. 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 As you were coming in. Um, what was the content? I said that I saw it again. Yeah, I would have just said that um, I was with Rigaud earlier today and we saw the same carriage again, the one that was outside the printing press just before everything went bad. His name is Comte Fenelik and he has a history of debauchery and hedonistic parties. So... That so is, yeah, I think in and in theory we were coming here because we were kind of following around like nobility were involved. So that is the threat. So yeah, I would, would share all that. Mm. Yeah, okay. In that case, I will probably like, I I will probably note Pressy and his distraction, and be like, I should probably tell Pressy about that lady in a little while. Um, but I will I will go, <clears throat> um, Sergeant, um, your uh, carriage is um here today the f the comte oui. okay all right this the nobility come and go as they please there is every chance that he will leave when he gets the chance i think one of us should go and look actually i don't think shit one of you is to go and look for the carriage <laughs> the other one come with me and we will meet with the capitan uh i can i can look for the carriage Sazon. okay pressy go um, I don't think I've noticed his, uh... Oh, no, I think we... D I do know he's a romantic. That's my character. So I think I'm a little aware. You know what? He gets a little bit of leash. He's allowed to. Yes. He, he, he goes <laughs> a little bit. Uh, I keep an eye on him as he goes, but, um, that sounds good. I make a show of, uh, marching off <laughs> back uh, past the I... group. Uh, actually, I, I don't know that I would break off without... Yeah, no, I wouldn't. I'm sorry, you mate. Could, you can whisper something. You, you have There's a second also, to be like... I'm I'm schmoozing a bit, so I'm taking the okay. opportunity to, like, talk to people that I see. So there's definitely plenty of opportunities to, like, have private conversations or step away from them. Like, I'm not fully on duty. I'm schmoozing a little yeah, bit. Yeah, in that case, I will I will go... Pazzy! You, uh, you see that, uh, that very well-dressed lady over there? I mean, they're all well-dressed, but particularly well put together. Uh, her name's Madame de Burien. She's a matchmaker. <gasps> she recently got a young soldier and an aristocrat together for a um, secret marriage ceremony. Perhaps there's someone you would like to talk to. You are very charming. I'm sure you'll make a good impression. Well, I, I don't know what you are implying. <laughs> thank, you, thank 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 you. Go, 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 go. All right. Burien. And you will dart off, uh, Pressy, march off, and then as you get around the corner, scurry off. Um, meanwhile, the two of you will head in to see Captain Manon. So, inside a room, uh, much less, uh, I mean, it's in Versailles, so it's opulent, but this is uh, towards one of the wings. It is much more practically decorated. There is a large desk set up to one side. Um, you, the two of you will arrive and speak to some servants and you are ushered inside into a small room where uh, Capitaine Manon and Dr. Rigaud are sitting and they stand as you approach and they will nod and they will um, shake your hands um, and Manon will turn to the servant and say thank you, uh, you may leave and uh, make sure that nobody is uh, lingering outside and the uh, servant nods and does as, as instructed um, Manon Should I stand turns. by the door, Sergeant? No, you should be here, Fossus Absolutely. What? Stay. Stay. Um, right. He goes back and he sits down and he looks across uh, the collection of you and he says, uh, thank you for coming and thank you for uh, the work you did the other day bringing this evidence. And he pulls out the handkerchief and he puts it on the table pointedly. You can see once again the blood upon it now dried and the initials M.A. written. He... Uh, uh, kind of straightens the affairs on his desk and then says I'll uh, I'll get right to the point uh, Comte Fenlick is a menace he threatens all of Paris this handkerchief it belonged 
to Marie Antoinette. I am sure of it, to the queen. And oh. it must have come into Fenleek's possession because he is the queen's favorite. That is the only thing that has protected him from arrest. It is not just me who says this. He is not just a menace because he, he, he has run down people with his carriage. There he has killed dozens in jewels. He, he, he takes every opportunity he can to, to, to murder uh, freely. He, but he also does other things and he gestures towards Rigaud and Rigaud kind of nods a few times and says, uh, my connections within uh, circles of the priesthood, uh, circles of science, say that the Comte is obsessed with dark things, wicked things. They say he, he, in his home, he hides blasphemous artifacts. They say he, he studies magic. They say he curses the name of the Pope. They say he is, they say he, he hates the King. He hates the Queen, but he has them twisted around his finger. He is a vile man and he needs to be stopped. This handkerchief, and he kind of point, looks at the collection of you. This handkerchief is everything that we need to make that happen. There is only one person who could have gotten such an artifact. I want you two to come with me now to bear as witness. We will go before the king and the queen today. And we will arrest Comte Fenelik and we will take him away. And that will be that. I will be going publicly against aristocrats when I make this accusation. I need to know that the two of you will speak honestly and truthfully about the crimes this man has committed. Of course we will. Um, you, do you show some kind of hesitance, uh, Renault? No, going before the king and queen, I think, is a is is a shoe up. And Doctor Rigo is as connected as as anyone else. I'm happy to throw it, my hat in with him. Exactly. So that that's great. So um, you. I think you what just... I saw the reactions when they said that he does like wizard shit. Um, it's a little less that's weird the, to say. That's the like the shocker. <laughs> Yeah, the, it's a little less weird to say that than it is in the modern age because at this time, it, you know, people are still accused yeah. of, you know, being, being uh, you know, magic users and, and, and all kinds of stuff. So there's a belief around that kind of uh, behavior. Um, so the collection of you kind of will nod to each other and, and uh, eventually... Um, what do you uh, need from us? Get Just your uniforms ready. Get, yeah, be prepared, be ready, and straighten yourselves up, and then let's go. We we'll march in. Put on your most terrifying com uh, command. The the same strength I showed you, uh, I, you you showed when you were standing in front of that crowd. And let's go. Let's do I it. I should tell you, Capitan. Uh, Plessy is currently uh, investigating uh, the Count's carriage. Uh, we know that it was here, and we didn't want to lose the opportunity. So uh, there may be more evidence to bear. Um, he nods a few times and then he kind of shrugs and says, we have what we need. Uh, Pressy, if he's at the Comte's carriage, that's fine. If the Comte tries to escape, perhaps he will be useful. Okay. And uh, the collection of you will get up. Is there anything you want to do before marching into the royal court and arresting Comte Fenleek? I would like a very brief aside with the sergeant. Sure, yeah. the uh, Renault, uh, sorry, uh, Rigaud and um, Manon will both be bustling around, so you can you can absolutely have a quick word. Sergeant, we oui? permission to speak freely, sir. Go ahead. I have a bad feeling about this. The captain knows what he's doing. We would not go forward if the evidence wasn't sufficient. Of course, sergeant, but. I just want it known. I have a bad feeling about this. I understand, but we do not operate on feelings. We operate on evidence and the king's will. Wait, Sasha. If you like, you may stay outside. I will tell the story of what we have seen, and I will present the evidence. I can bear that, if you can. It is not an issue of uh, telling the truth, Sergeant, and I... 
would not let your back go unprotected, sir. Then we will say no more of this. Wait. Very good. Um, this is internally very shaky evidence. <laughs> It is um, a hanky with initials on it, and they're like, uh, "And on this, we will I, build our empire." It is. It is a. It <laughs> is a hanky. Die. It is a hanky with initials on it, plus the word of of two very senior aristocrats. And it, it, it's. I mean, Melon and um, Rigaud are yes. are yes. I, I, that's why I'm I'm leaning on. I presume they have weight here because what from what we've seen, it's pretty. Yeah. It, it's kind of one of those. It, it, you're in that sort of. It, it, it's it's very much kind of like a court of public opinion here, and it, you know, no one would have a handkerchief with Ma Marie Antoinette's initials at all. If they were aristocrat, it would seem like they are trying to copy Marie Antoinette, and that would get them shunned. If they were a peasant, okay, they'd get okay. killed for doing it. So it, it, it's you know, people are scared. It really is. No one would have it unless it's hers. Um, if someone says, why is your handkerchief here um, around a murder? You have to go, oh, good gracious, I have no idea. I completely distance myself from this person and order his immediate execution. Okay, all it's, right, it's good. You're kind of trapped in this weird formality. Um, but yes, you're right. It's It could be more solid. Oh, no, that, that, uh, that, that feels better about it, knowing that the handkerchief is a bit more significant than just, like, there's not a chance of someone else, you know... Mary Anthony. That's yeah. Well, you you know it's it's yeah. it's yeah. Like, no no peasant could have this because they struggle to get bread, and this is like an this would be like you know years of pay. Mm, yeah. Um, and no aristocrat would dare do it because it's too cheeky. Because it's too cheeky. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I would uh, I would like to take a moment to ensure that while as always my uniform is on point mm -hmm. uh, it is particularly on point uh, yeah um, but I will also glance over my sergeant and if there's anything out of place respectfully go to like would, sergeant you're um this this that or the other is out of uh, you know may I kind of thing to like make sure that he is also I'm gonna look pristine good. for the for the for the situation. Why don't you make another disguise check? Okay, it's gonna end well. Sure. <laughs> oh my good god! Yeah, you're you're uh, uh, you stand by and you like the, the Rigo and and, and Malo are looking and then as as Rigo steps back, uh, Malo says, "Could you could you could you check me as well?" <laughs> and Rigo's <"Hey>, thinking too. <laughs> you come round and you know. Yeah, yeah. I will. I will just kind of like. <laughs> Uh, um, I, you know what it is? I have like I, it's like um, Poirot. It's like everything needs to be neat and straight, and like yep. everything's just like where it's one of those things where it's like nothing needs to be polished. But everything needs to be where it should go. Yeah. Mm. Um, and it lends an air of respectability. Absolutely. Which I need if I'm gonna pretend to be my husband. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, the four of you leave and march across the grounds of Versailles. You will be reaching. The king and the queen. Pressy, where are you headed? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, just doing a little bit of marching up and down the uh, the hallway. Um, are you going to be where... going to the the carriage, or are you going to be speaking to Madame de Blien? Uh, well, I mean, every everything in good time. The carriage can wait. It's not going anywhere anytime soon, to the best of my knowledge. Nothing, nothing big is about to happen. Nothing dramatic. No dramatic scenes. Oh, absolutely scenes. no. So I think I've got a moment to stop by in this much my car. Um, you catch a moment when, sort of in between, when everyone people go for food and 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 uh, uh, Madame de Brienne has a has a like a spare moment, and she catches your eye as well because you're very you're a very handsome young soldier, and she will nod at you and 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 say, you know, ah, you know, I I I, I see you. Uh, you, you lingering nearby. Don't worry, if you want to come and speak to me, it's perfectly all right. Oh, madam, you have such a fine eye. Um, yes, the, the <laughs> truth is I, I do seek your audience. Um, I understand you are a matchmaker of sorts. Oh, she like, her eyes light up with glee and she says, oh, oh yes, I, I am. And, and to, 
to well you know sometimes i'm a matchmaker with my work cut out for me but you you uh, what is your name uh, uh christophe pressy madame christophe pressy i see and and to, to whom uh does the does the 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 if you does your affection stray oh madame to the most beautiful girl in paris Mm, it can't be. I haven't met you before, but tell me. <laughs> uh, I, she, she is uh, 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 Melody Benoit. Oh, Melody Benoit, and she kind of... Um, uh, all right, so she leans in, and she's very happy to talk to you. Now, um, I would like you to make a, make, make a charm check for me. Oh, I'm charming as heck. One point of One luck. One point of luck. Yeah, I think that this is this is the time. Uh, this is the time. Uh, okay, so immediately, um, uh, she starts, uh, you know, unloading upon you uh, these these wonderful, like you know, secrets and meeting places, and you know, oh, you know, she will be here at this palace and uh, at this time, and of course, she'll be going to this event, so the two of you could meet here. And I happen to know that she totally, because you haven't had too many chances to speak with uh, Melody beyond, you know, a few court words so she's telling you telling you about her you're, you're wrapped you're getting all this amazing attention unfortunately I can't, every time one of um, her friends comes past she says hey you, you, Lucy come sit down uh, Pressy is in love with Melody Benoit <laughs> and, uh, Im immediately the gossip starts to spread like wildfire uh, <sighs> through the palace and you just know this is going to get back to old Leatherface uh, Madame, the <laughs> Benoit. Like a fucking Madame please um, Madame I, I, I owe you an enormous debt of gratitude for, for everything you have told me today but uh, the truth of it is um the, the Comte Benoit he does not strictly approve of our match. Um, <gasps> that is, that is, that is why I come to you, and uh, perhaps a certain air of subtlety is required. Oh, Starcross lovers, oh, isn't that amazing, Marion? Did you hear? <laughs> Comte Benoit hates him, <laughs> and uh, um, uh, she kind of doesn't care. Uh, at the end oh. of the day, she probably thinks that the two of you, you know, she will. She will matchmake, and you two will have a lovely fling and affair, as far as she's concerned. But you're a, you're a commoner. You're, I mean, you're not going to marry her. That'd be crazy. Um, that's so. For what it's worth, she does give you what Pressy thinks is a lot of valuable information. Unfortunately, she is a, uh, she is a, an incorrigible gossip. And oh. Mark explicitly says within the book that if you, if you, if you speak to her. Uh, it's unlucky. That said, why don't you make a persuasion check? Well, I, I think uh, she she has disregarded me as a common peasant, but uh, the truth is, I was uh, raised in the clergy, which is like another another class up, I believe. It is. Um, so hopefully, it's not un unreasonable that a, a a member of the clergy class would marry a, a, an aristocrat. Make me a persuasion, and so what? Have a bonus day on this. Well, I was I was thinking credit rating. Oh, that's also fine. Yeah, that is also. Perfectly. I'm gonna have a bonus die. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Outstanding. Fourteen is a success. Um, she starts to take you a lot more seriously, and um, the gossip is still going because she is an incorrigible gossip. But she says eventually, she says, "Look, I can't bend why you know you. He can't tell you not to. You know, he he doesn't have the ear of the court anymore." And she drops casually some scandal he was involved in that he is yeah. really trying to keep quiet. And and um, uh, she she will say, you know, if he if he gives you a hard time. You know, if he if he in interfered, you 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 just you you could just mention that, and he would have to shut up. Um, and I'll think exactly what that scandal could be. Or why don't you, if you can come up with something that uh, uh, Comte Benoit was involved in, um, that he's trying to keep a little quiet. Um, is it as is it as saucy as a uh, uh, serving maid who is in oh, his employ uh, I, that and sounds... then wasn't seen for nine months? Oh yes, That's that saucy. sounds. That is very saucy. I think that's perfect. Um, I, 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 I really like that, but part of me is also like, would they have cared? Like, I feel like that's, like, you know, it's a commoner. Who gives a fuck? Do the fact that he, he does he tried care. tried to pass the child off as nobility, 
maybe like he like it's clear that he's this is who he's got lined up to be an heir or something actually you know you know what it is the though scullery maids it's kid. not that he did it it's that he got caught because mm. that's the whole thing is like it's fine as long as people like people can know about it as long as they don't know about it but yeah. people know about it <laughs> I'm taking this all from Dangerous Liaisons, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Now, as your conversation finishes up, and, and for what it's worth, there is some kind of mute, like people know now that they would, they, they care that it would, they would hurt you. So they're not going to make it obvious to Comte Benoit. Um, although there is some knowledge about it on the court, but that might be a good thing. Meanwhile, the four of you are walking up towards uh, the sort of central area of Versailles where you know the king and the queen are. And as you stroll through, you know, quickly, powerfully forward, ready to make your case, suddenly you hear a bell ring, a huge, loud bell. And um, all of you stop. Bruno, you probably realize what this is. Uh, Hugel, you don't. Melon kind of freezes. Uh, Rigo turns white and I, says, "I think I know what just happened." What do you want to? You want to guess it? You want to drop the line? Yeah, I I think the Dauphin just died. He did indeed. Fuck. All around, uh, the aristocrats like stop and they turn and they look, and the sound of the bell rings out. Orchestras stop playing in the yards as they look up, um, and everything falls dreadfully silent except for this loud chiming bell again and again the dauphin is dead um as people are frozen malon is the first to act and he he grabs with one arm he grabs rigaud with the other he grabs you renault and he like says back we turn back now and, and, and like you yeah, literally do a one like a good time, for time. <laughs> no um uh as you're walking back you will already see carriages start to leave uh people are fleeing essentially the king and the queen will be tearing back towards paris um uh and, and and people start to scatter pressy you hear this and you can at this point have, have seen your companions who if are crossing I've, the yard if i've if uh, captain's got like a death grip on me can i turn to hugel and say pressy go get pressy help him with whatever he needs oui, uh, and i will uh, can I say, like, even though you said Hugo wouldn't know what was going on, I had the rumor sure. from before. Yeah, if you, if you think you would. Yeah, okay. I mean, if I know that if if I it is not just... the first time the bell has sounded for the death of some like a king, uh, and that is a known thing that would happen, I think I'd put two and two together. Absolutely, or, or you, I could you, just you add it to my that. description as well, if necessary. No, like, it's I think fine. you can I'm have that info. To, happy to put two and two together, I, regardless. I know when I'm rushing to find Pressy. You find him easily, and you can you can you you tear him away. You know, around you, the aristocrats are like uh, like you know, I'm gonna death grip Pressy, and as they're walking off, I'm gonna be like Pressy, the Dauphin is dead. We have to go. Do not ask questions. Was... We're going. Sergeant's orders. <laughs> Drag him. Away. Um, the aristocrats around Pressy have heard the same thing, and they've all gone silent too. Um, so the Prince of France, the king's son, is dead, and now. Actually, uh, I would possibly, like, turn to the group if they're looking kind of a bit shocked and, like, they're not really going anywhere. And I'll be like, Madame and Monsieur, I recommend you leave. Uh, if people will Excellent nod and, and Ma Madame de Brienne will, will get up and she says, yeah, indeed. Uh, and, and people start to hustle. You see, like, even the orchestras start to get up and pack away their things. As you're walking across the... Um, uh, the, the, the grounds now, you can see, like, all that food left abandoned they're not even here now literally the aristocrats are leaving and it just sits there servants some servants start to pack up what they can um i mean Glitch. yeah you, you can go past the table on the way out cool i have like, a pretty awesome. decent sleight of hand <laughs> the collection of you all gather again in that same side room with captain Manlon there rigaud is just like ashen faced it's it's like all his tiredness has just hit him at once um uh, Malon, you're there for a moment with, uh, with, sorry, Rigo is there for, Renault is there for a moment with Malon. Oh, so many names. Um, and the two of you look towards each other. Um, uh, Malon kind of says, it's, it's, uh, it's not your fault, Lucien. It's, uh, it's, uh, he was sick. He was a weak child. There was nothing that anyone could have done. Um, and, um, uh, basically, you know, um, 
Rigo looks pretty beyond, um, you know, any kind of uh, uh, comfort. I forgive, but this man is now n- kind of going to be out of favour with the royalty. Oh, yeah. And probably also kind We're of potentially in danger. Um, it is uh, very possible that this man yeah. gets in quite a bit of trouble. So um, I might it's turn to the sergeant. And well, the, the, something okay. is going to happen for the first okay, the cool, two cool. of you as you were going across. But first of all, I want to know, um, Reno, are you saying anything? Are you doing anything? No, I think I've had the same thought as Hugel, although I'm less worried that something will happen to him than I'm worried that something might happen to me for hitching my horse to this particular wagon. Uh, so I think I stand behind the captain and very much take my lead from him. Yeah. Uh, the captain seems... Uh, captain seems to be pretty genuinely, like, friends with... Uh, with... with uh, Rigel and is, um, you know, trying to... Okay. Well, in that case, uh, I... Don't really say anything. Hmm, fair. Now, as the two... is very confused. Yes, fair enough. You, you, you've heard the bell, and you would know of like the church rituals. You would realize the Dauphin has died. Yeah. Why? Why does? Why does that affect our ambition? Uh, because. How familiar are you with the political situation in France at the moment, Poissy? We have a political situation. <laughs> <laughs> um, you just want to okay. not to sing. <laughs> we are. What is, um, what is the situation? Okay, Intelligence I, fifty. We do not have. I, I do not have time. We do not have time. But uh. let's just go with. Things are not good, and what just happened is going to make things a lot worse. So. I will explain a lot more when we are not in the middle of the Palace of Versailles, where the wrong move could potentially get us all killed. Okay? Um, you two, as you are walking closer, um, a line of carriages like blocks you off for a second from getting to the um, uh, the, the the room with uh, your captain in it. And these are all carriages that are, um, that are belonging to the aristocrats as they flee and you have to sort of wait. Um, as you're waiting for them to go past, one of them rolls in front of you. And it is the carriage of Comte Finlick. And both of you see it. And it stops right in front of you. And the side door opens. And a man steps out. Comte Finlick is tall. Uh, with long, dark hair. He is impeccably well-dressed. He has sallow features. He's very pale. Big eyes that seem to swim uh, when you look at him. He is... Uh, dreadfully, terribly a- attractive. Uh, you kind of can't turn your eyes away from him, but you also feel vaguely sick. Um, he stands up, bringing himself to his full height, and he is very tall. Um, he takes uh, a few steps down and drops. He's level with you now, but he still seems to tower over uh, both of you. To one side, he has a gleaming uh, sword, and to the other side, you can see the shape of a pistol. Um, in his hand, he is twirling a, a riding crop, um, something that you would use to drive horses. Um, and as you see his servants, uh, you know, who are stationed around his carriage, you can see the driver of his carriage. They look over as well, and you can see that they have scars across their face, the kind of wounds that you would get from being whipped with a riding crop. Um, oh, fuck. Fenelik, uh turns towards the two of you. Um... And he... I would like to snap a salute and look very much like I am an on-duty soldier who is interacting with a very high-ranking court official or, like, aristocrat and just utter, utter politeness and, like, yes, sir. Absolutely. I, I do the same credit... thing as Ugel, but slower. Credit rating <laughs> check and uh, penalty die for you, uh, <laughs> um, uh, Pressy. Cat. Can I can I do this way? <laughs> this isn't real. This isn't really a. Uh, I, I don't a fast talk. I'd take. Oh, do I have fast talk? No. All right. Well, my credit rating's twenty. So. Well done. Ooh. Penalty. I mean, you could. Oh, you're gonna make me do the penalty. Uh, All right. right. Oh. oh. Tease. Tease. Oh. Um. Heartbreaking. Uh, 
I am also very well put together right now. <laughs> like, extremely... Right. Yeah, you are. You are. Extremely sure disguised as a, a, like, very efficient soldier. Yep, absolutely. Fenelik's terrifying eyes track onto you, and then they pass over you, Hugel, and they fix upon you, Pressy. Uh, and he says, uh, Messieurs, I saw you with the catacombs the other night. You almost stepped in front of my carriage. His eyes drill into yours, Pressy. Make a sanity check. Oh, but bonus die because I spent the day cleaning the church. <laughs> yes, absolutely. You got Genuinely, a yes. On you. Oh, he's killing it. Ugh. Oh, fantastic. Could have been right. a 99, um, but it wasn't. All right. Uh, I also want you to make a power check. Bonus die because I spent the day cleaning the Not church. Not for this one, but you don't oh. worry. You've, you've avoided the big penalty at this time. I was in God's house, James. <laughs> you were. You were and you're a hard success. Hard success. Okay, <laughs> fantastic. So, um, first of all, you take no sanity damage. His eyes seem like massive and, and scary, but something in the back of your mind literally, I think, fixes on, is it a him, possibly, that just sort of suddenly makes you... Uh, brings you some kind of comfort. We. Oui. All right, and you are uh, you are uh, just sort of gazing, um, terrified at him, uh, and he locks eyes with you, and he's just watching, basically a, a, a staring contest. He's watching for as long as he can, and he is trying to, you know, gauge uh, exactly what you you are, what you're what you're about, and your eyes lock. He is going to make a roll. Take your time. And with a hard success, uh, the two of you lock eyes and this silence draws out. Hugel, you watch, and the two of them seem like they are somewhere else, just completely uh, focused. Make another power check. Who, me? Yep. As the gaze continues. You're in a staring contest with Confen League. Success. Okay. <laughs> Regular success. Yeah. And he. Regular success. Make another make another one. Well you keep going until someone the, beats the, the tie? Gen genuinely, this is this is how it works. The seconds draw past. The two of you have said nothing for maybe 15 seconds now. Um, Hugel, if you want to do anything. Uh, do I feel like there is anything appropriate I could do in this situation? Should do my credit rating check. Um, that you would feel be like you should maintain a salute and make no movement. That Lovely. Would be... I'm just going to continue doing that then. Because I'm like, nope, sorry, mate. But I actually, can I, can I, like, if, depending on which side I'm on, whichever salute I have. Uh, can I very gently, like, touch Pisces' arm, like, subtly, sort of, like, to remind him that there's someone else there? Sure, make, make a sleight of hand check. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. It's, is that a is fumble? That, no. Technically, it's, it's not. Any. Yes, right. you, you can are... Can I... Should I push it? <laughs> if you push it, you'll be you'll be the, the, the you'll be sort of alerting Fenleek that you are you got you are trying to you are, you you that something is up that you know something about yeah. him. Oh, it's not a fumble. No, it's not a fumble. Uh... D does Pressy look like he is in trouble, or does it just look like he's in a weird staring competition? Weird spot? staring competition. More okay, than in that trouble. case, no. I'm just gonna kind of leave it. I All think. right. Sorry, Your I... hand try, but you you can't you can't bring yourself to. You find yourself like almost paralyzed with fear, fear that is boiling up inside your stomach, and then finally, Pressy, you look away first. Your eyes blink and, and you fall down, and you see Fenleek just smile. Um, a, a, a crushing kind of sense of panic just falls over you, uh, uh, Pressy. It's no more than that. He wins, and that seems to be enough for him. He turns and his eyes fix upon you, Hugel, the good soldier. And he says, you were a 
You're unloading bodies, helping Rigol with his work. Oh, we miss you. Hmm. Touching all those bodies infected with sickness. Do you oh. think it was Rigol who gave the disease to the boy? I do not think anything of anyone in the palace, sir, it is above my pay grade. Make a persuasion check. Come on, persuasion. Boot licking should just be a skill. No, that I mean, practically. You can, if a, if a hard success would get me better, or like I will give you the points, but otherwise I have succeeded. Uh, no, that's, uh, that's fine. He, he kind of nods at you a few times. Um, you, you seem to kind of not interest him, basically. Mm -hmm. He sort of, his eyes move past you. They fix on Tressy's. Pressy, he won this contest with you. And as he, as he kind of looms over you, you glance up at him. He's looking at you like prey is the only, only way you can think of it. Um, he smiles once, uh, and then turns back, steps into his carriage and without a word, it rolls past, and he is gone. I see. Are, are you alright? We. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, I think we need to get to the sergeant, and we need to leave this place very quickly. We. Come on. And I will, at this point, yep. put hands on him, and hopefully the, the warmth of another human was enough to kind of get him out of whatever he's currently in. Yeah, you, you're not so... You, it was The sensation is already leaving your body, uh, Pressy, but there's just those burning eyes, you know, fixed into your mind. I kind of want to cry a little bit. That's fair, just that's fair. I kind of want to cry a little bit. Just going to have a little cry. What did you say, Dave? Sorry? Is there any sign of melody as they're leaving? <laughs> uh, actually, uh, oh. that's, a, that's a good point. Um... If I see uh, Melody, I'll feel this much is the better. main plot I'm invested in. <laughs> okay, absolutely. You, it's not you, everything else. Romance plot. You feel sad, you're Get alone, it. and then you see the Comte Benoit's carriage go past, and just for a second, <laughs> a flash of golden hair, and all oh. is right in the world. <laughs> um, you'll be hurried inside. Bye. We go. Uh, Let us go. <laughs> <laughs> I That's take so it to your conversation with uh, don't, 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 don't. Uh, Madame de Brian went well then, Percy. Oh, yes. <laughs> I have uh, several leads to follow. I'm very glad for you. Let us go. Inside the room, uh, Rigaud is pretty quiet. Um, the collection of you join for a moment, and Captain Mammel kind of, um, you know, is, is pretty still. Um, after a while, he turns to the three of you, and he will say, I... Uh, I, this changes things, obviously. I'm not the, allowed to say in character what I would like to say. The but doy. <laughs> the, the yeah, doy. No yeah. shit. This is, uh, we can no longer go forward and throw our weight around. Uh, there may be some residual tension between the royal family and uh, Lucien and um, Rigol kind of goes <laughs> like almost like psychotically laughs for a second and good then oh, stays quiet. Um, uh, Malon kind of turns towards the three of you and says, uh, Fenlik, he hosts affairs at his villas. He hosts parties at his villas and I happen to know that there is one approaching. We need more evidence. I'm authorizing the three of you to go on a reconnaissance mission and find evidence that proves the Comte's sinful, debaucherous, treasonous ways. Find that evidence. Do no more. Do not put yourselves at risk. If you need supplies, I will organize it. Anything short of cannons, I can get for you. Guns, I will send a word. Well, send word to the Bastille and have them requisitioned for you. We need that information. Travel to Poissy. It's close by there. Report back to me. Do not let yourselves be caught. We cannot allow this to be blown out of proportion until we can arrest that man. He looks across the three of you. Are any of you giving like vibes of, I kind of don't want to do this? I don't have vibes of, I don't want to do it, but I do have like a look of concern. 
Anyone else? Giving vibes of don't really understand what's going on. <laughs> yep, fair. But uh, we'll do what I'm told. Yeah, and uh, I am, if anything, I'm eager to be given a task because I now I know what to, you know, I know the next step and the captain knows what's going on. So we follow the captain's orders. The captain has, mm. it's all good now. It, all good. Exactly. And he nods. And this is an order. You will go, you will get evidence from Fenleek's estate and you will report back to Captain Mennell. You will need to prove it. We can do this. Um, if you can relieve Beaumont, Dupois and Babine so that they can assist us. It is done. It is done. Very good. Then we are ready. Already. We can go. Uh, when is the event? I understand it to be tomorrow evening. Right. Okay. Uh, and the On location? the eve of the death of the Dauphin. And he shakes his head. Shameful. Good luck. Stay silent. Do not be caught. I understand it. The Comte has guards. I'm sure that they will be eager to test themselves, and he has killed dozens in duels, so he is a dangerous man himself. I understand. Good. And he turns back, and he will go to comfort uh, Rigo. The three of you are not dismissed, but you can leave at your discretion. Uh, we step outside, unless anyone wanted to talk to the captain. And I, I will say like to talk to the. I, I will take an opportunity to talk to the captain if I may. Okay. Yes. Um, captain. We. Oui? You are concerned for your friend. Am I correct? Uh, he he will be fine, won't you, Rigo? And Rigo kind of nods. He's like, I'll I'll be okay. I'll be okay. Um, if you need to get out, uh, like unnoticed, um. If not looking the way that you currently look is something that would help, I, I may be able to assist a minor disguise. Um, uh, Melon nods and Rigo looks kind of panicked, but uh, Melon sort of pats him on the shoulder and he's like, it's all, it's all right. Thank you, uh, Hugo. We will, I will tell you, I will speak with you if we need to, if we need to make use of your, your skills. Of course. Um, as you're like walking out, um, you hear Rigo go, "Will I need to leave Paris?" And then <laughs> the door shuts a second later. Yeah. <laughs> the three uh, of you are outside. So what did long. you find when you looked for the Comte? Uh, but he, he found us. Yes. You spoke with him. He spoke to us. What did he say? Not so much what he said, uh, more how he said it. He is a terrifying individual. He also knows what we look like. He recognized both of us, and I imagine he would recognize you, Sergeant, as well, from the incident outside the catacombs. He made a point of mentioning it. Very well. This we reconnaissance are... mission might be more difficult than the captain thinks. He has given us our orders and we will follow them. We are in dangerous territory now, so we need to do as we are told and tread the line. A toe out of place, and we could all go down with Rigaud, and who knows what else will happen. So, we do what we must, we get the evidence, and all will be set to course again. We? Oui? So listen, oui, so we need to make so every preparation necessary. As far as I am concerned, this Comte is now our enemy. If necessary, if his guards give us trouble, we will deal with them as we must. So prepare your arms, prepare your sabers, uh, and we will have the others meet us there tomorrow night. Make your preparations. We will go in at evening, after dark has fallen. Hopefully no one is seen. We? Oui? Uh, would a disguise help? Certainly. I'm not bad at making disguises, so. We know that right. he is holding a party for nobility, so there will be nobles and aristos in attendance. If you can pass yourself as one, we can work with that. I don't know, I... Actually, perhaps 
Perhaps. Otherwise, if you have a small and portable sewing kit, when we get there on the day, if we can quickly dispose of one of the guards and you can modify it to fit one of us, that will serve. Uh, either is, we could do both, sir. Uh, you could. We could take the uniform of one of the guards and one of us could wear it. Uh, if Pressy is willing to um, be part of a little charade, I think a new aristocrat and her dashing uh, suitor might be an interesting uh, addition to the party. On, on the other hand, maybe we have better chances of success if we split up. Though, if, if he wants to recognize us, he'll be recognizing us as a group. What if um, we have an aristocrat and uh, a guard and uh, staff split up that way? Yeah, that could work. My intent would be to approach... Uh, stealthily to not be seen for as long as possible to take out or you know uh disarm one of the guards and take their uniform and then continue patrols from the outside but that won't be enough someone's going to need to get inside the house pressy i know you are sweet on that noble girl but you'll be throwing her to the wolves if you asked her to attend i, t uh, oh. I think i think hugo laughs and is like uh, I did not mean for Pressy to take uh, um, his his bow. I I meant I'm good at disguises, and I have been told I make a passable lady in the right Don't clothing. Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most silly thing I've heard. You as a woman. <laughs> I mean, you are the peak of masculinity, my friend. You are very kind, Prasi, but uh, trust me on this one. I think I scrub up okay, if necessary. Anyone who I am putting in. it on the table as an option only. We will follow whatever you advise, Sajan. The aristocrat idea is dangerous. Anyone who goes inside will be scrutinized. The nobility, though, they do not look so closely at the help and at the guards. I think anyone who goes in dressed as a noble will be examined and weighed up, whereas I suspect the guards and servants will be ignored and allowed to pass. Uh, servant is also a very good idea, Sajan. Okay. The well. same applies. It's... Also, I do not know if we can get the... I don't have the money, although we could possibly requisition silks to make a, a passable suit or dress, but... I think your suggestion of servants is, is a good idea, Sajan. Uh, the, same, the same applies. We can dress ourselves as people from the household or what have you, but um, maybe uh, I think it is possible. Okay, so yes, that was a good idea of this sergeant's. I I just gotta like <laughs> nudge Pressy as like I, mm -mm. <laughs> everything is the sergeant's idea. <laughs> The sergeant will take credit for the forthcoming disaster. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, the plan is to dress as servants slash common folk on the approach, not to show ourselves as military or guards, because we do not want this to get back to the captain if things go wrong. Then once we get inside, we will attempt to waylay some of the guards, take their uniforms as necessary, and then find some way into the house. I believe there will be a significant amount of improvisation, so prepare what you can, and the rest, we will wing. Huh? Very good. Very good. Uh, okay. Research on. And with, Make your preparations. With, with that, the collection of you will spend the rest of the day traveling back to Paris, where you will gather up essential supplies, horses, weapons, uh, tools Artillery. for your disguise. Of course. Uh, well, you know, unfortunately, no cannons yet. Um, the... The uh, next day, you will make your way down towards Poissy through the woods, uh, the deep and thick forests, where in the shadow of a great mansion, a terrified group of villagers um, huddle as uh, Comte Fenlick prepares his next grand ball. Inside, dark things will happen, but you'll all be there to see him when you arrive. Uh, Let's leave the session there. Thanks so much, everybody, and thank Hot you. Dog.
Uh, awesome. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Jackson. Thank you, Art. Thank you, Mel audience. Seems you, Jim. Cheers, Jimbo. Uh, thank yeah. you for joining us, uh, lovely audience. Um, remember, you can subscribe to the KFCM YouTube channel and watch all of our VODs there. Thank you again to Sirenscape, to Roll20, and to Web Captioner, tools which we use in our games. You can get uh, Reign of Terror from chaosium.com in PDF or in hardcover. And yeah, have a wonderful day. We'll be back next week. Rock and roll.